Hello and welcome back. My name's Andrew Keeping and I've had quite a few requests asking me what are the plugins that I use on a daily basis that have the greatest impact on my music, on my sound design or on my production work in general. As I was building up my knowledge and expertise around music production, I did a lot of research on YouTube and there would be certain people that I would follow because I liked their style. I also liked the way that they worked. Now, in the process of my learning, I made a lot of mistakes. A lot of the mistakes, the main mistakes that I made was I got caught up on buying the latest plugins, this, that and the other, people praising this, people praising that, without actually realising what did I need from the plugin. Now, since then, what I would first of all recommend would be before you go into buying any of the plugins that I use and that I'm recommending here, what I would do first and foremost is get to know the plugins, the techniques of EQing, compression, all these really important basic techniques in your music production, panning, whatever it might be, reverbs, delays. Don't just go out and buy the ones that you see recommended across the whole of YouTube. First of all, get to know how to use them by going in and using the ones in your door of your choice. I use Cubase Pro 10 and they've got an amazing set of plugins already in there. But some of them, I come to a point where I find there's a limitation to it. I need a little bit more. So I'm gonna go in today and explain my workflow a little bit and also about how I use the plugins and why I use those plugins. That's hopefully gonna help you decide whether you need to take that step from the plugin that you're already using to a third party plugin. So, which one are we gonna start with? Let's find out. So when you first start out working in music technology, the first and probably the most important lesson is around understanding frequencies, how to adapt those frequencies or notch out offending tones, also how to boost and cut, all these important lessons that you have to learn in EQ. Equalizer is probably the tool you are gonna use most while mixing and mastering. So you need the best. And I've tried so many different EQs over the years. I've paid a lot for different ones from Waves. There, there are some really good ones out there, but with FabFilter Pro Q3, this is my choice because it's the highest possible sound quality that I get. It's very extensive in its feature set and it looks bloody gorgeous. Look at that GUI. This EQ is really designed to help you achieve the sound that you're looking for in the quickest way possible. It's got a very large interactive EQ display, as you can see here. You can create bands where you need them, and you can even enable a dynamic EQ that acts as a bit of a compressor, or you can have an expander if you reverse that the other way. Um, and that can work for any band. And you can select and edit multiple bands all at the same time. It has a unique feature like a spectrum grab, which I love. And I think we'll be able to show you that as well in a second. It's got a full screen mode, as I mentioned, and it has an EQ match that really can speed up your workflow. So we've also got top quality linear phase operation in here. So in addition to the zero latency, it's got a unique natural phase modes and smooth dynamic EQ per band mid side processing as well. Full surround sound support. So if you're using Dolby Atmos 7.1.2, it works very well with that and supports that. It's got intelligent solo features as well. So if you want to be able to just listen to the particular frequencies that you're targeting, you can do that. And that's, I find that absolutely one of the most important and useful aspects of this plugin itself. No, right, so here we have a guitar groove going on and what I want to do, have a listen. You 
can hear that string squeak. And I want to tame that down a little bit now. I could do it by notching up, adjusting the cue down here and getting it really fine. And then sweeping across using the headphones. Now I know it's usually about that sort of frequency. Or oh, what we could do is just take our grab at the bottom. There it is. You saw it jump up there. So we've got one. so you don't hear my voice and you'll hear the effect. Here we go and let's bypass this. This is a great drum EQ. It gives it that little bit of magic, takes out the mud and you can see that it's just a nice equalizer, nice spectrum there and dynamic EQ is doing its job. Okay, for my next choice, uh, this is going to be a bit of a cheat, really, because I'm choosing the brilliant Sound Toys products. Now, individually, these are well known for their plugins. You've got the Decapitator. You've got the, the awesome Echo Boy. Many producers use the delays. I have to say I'm not a big one for using presets. I've mentioned earlier that using preset is very good if you can then go and tweak it to what you want. It also gives you an idea of some of the options that are available to you. Sound toys have a huge array of uh, presets and actually when you're dealing with a lot of these effects, sometimes you just need a go to area where you can start. I would actually experiment individually with these products and just get a feel for the design and the effects and how you sort of tinker with it to suit your needs. However, one of the great things about this effect rack and is the reason why it's my next plug-in choice is because what we can do, let's say I want a decapitator. I just pull that in. I'm going to actually throw in as well a crystallizer because this crystallizer adds some great effects. Now, if you let's talk about the presets. If I click on this button here, I can go to individual presets. So I want a reverse echo on this and I'm going to go for, let's say, that. And on the decapitator, let's have a look. I really want to go with an effect on here so if I want to an, add a little bit of tinsel I think tinsel sounds lovely and down here I'm going to go for micro shift micro shift does what it says on the tin it just throws it into a off off kilter so a little bit of a spread we can thicken it by the way this is a really good sound for an acoustic guitar I love using this the air is great as well um, in fact all of these this is one example where the the use of the presets are excellent and I would use the presets on these and then I would just fine tune um, if you want to detune it, this is a really good detuner so it just takes off the edge and gives it a bit more focus um, and that's great for th thickening up a part and this thickener here works really well it's great for doubling as well if you've got vocals doubling on the vocals so what I'm going to do to start with I'm going to silence this one for a minute so you can hear what the original sounds like here's a an arpeggio piano and now I'm going to slowly mix in now the, what I like most of all about this effects rack is that I can actually go into each part and mix each effect so rather than it take up a lot of cpu 
and energy of your channel strip. It's all included in the one plugin here, and you can do it all at the same place rather than have um, your real estate on your screen being used up. So it's a great example of some of the best things. Let's say I didn't want that. Let's go for the primal, primal tap. I'm going to throw in primal tap. I've used this a lot when it comes to working in um, sound design for Foley effects for films. I recently did a, an effect, I can bring it down here, a dog noise. And I'll, I'll show you one of the effects that I use with dog noises and night ambience. Also building an atmosphere for a scene in a room. You can really use some of these effects with the delays and just fine tune them to suit your needs. It's a it's an amazing piece of kit. So that's my next choice, and I wholeheartedly recommend that. What I would also suggest is when it is quite an expensive set to get the entire package. However, they really do some amazing deals at times. And if you get the opportunity to, sometimes they throw in this, for example, this um, is an emulation of the Siemens, the CQ. I love this. It, I use this on um, my master bus quite often as it has a really, really good clarity, um, clarity uh, EQ. And it just it just pops because you can adjust the drive when you've got the mids and you've got them tuned in just to where you want them. And then you can push this drive. It almost has this analog feel about it. So it almost feels as though I'm using the the hardware in the studio itself. And it just gives you that that pop on a master bus or even some um, some of your subs as well. So a lovely, lovely effect on there. But what I would suggest is sometimes they offer these free with a package deal or you might have uh, the entire set over the holidays. I know these Black Friday deals, but sometimes they throw them in there and it's worth waiting for that because Sound Toys is one of my great go-to plugins, hence being on my list. So here we have my next choice, and this is uh, Vary Audio by Cubase Steinberg, and it's been packaged with their software for quite a few years now, but has recently gone through uh, an upgrade, and it's a very, very good upgrade, and that comes with Cubase Pro 10. Vary Audio is basically a way of being able to tune, quantize, um, straighten curves, and, you know, get shift formants and various other different ways of affecting a audio signal. And this can work for trumpets, this can work for clarinets, anything with a single line, it works really well. In addition to that, you can add harmonies. It has so many capabilities to it. But I use it primarily on my daily basis with working with different singers. Now, I have quite a lot of singers that I work with and they range from some of the best opera, operatic singers that are fully trained and have complete control over their vibrato, over their diaphragm, and therefore a better understanding of tuning. However, however good you are, you still need some help with the tuning in some incidents. And your ears are just so good, but when it comes to working with different musicians in a studio, we might have to adapt your tuning accordingly. Now, at the same time, I work with singers that are coming into the studio for the very first time, fulfilling their dream of being able to uh, record a track of their choice, and they might need some more work on them um, than maybe the opera singer but however this is a um, a software a plugin that I use very very regularly and I love using it let's uh, give you an example of how this works so this is an um, has no effects. 3 a.m. I wonder if I see you again 
Now we can hear there at the end, it drifts off a little bit. Let's have a listen to the first bit and give you an example of what we can do. We can just pull it and quantize it and you can see the percentages here and you can pull it in and you can see what it's doing to it. It just straightens it up a little bit. Let's have a listen to that. Lie awake at 3 a.m. Now I quite like the effect there and I like the, um, the vibrato and warble in the voice at the end there. I think that's got a bit of character. Lie awake at 3 a.m. I like all of that. But if we wanted to go for that whole share effect, look, I'm going 100% here and it becomes robotic. Lie awake at 3 a.m. And we can hear the effect. Now, you can get this sort of software with Melodyne 4 is probably the most famous of those. And it is a superb piece of equipment. I've used it in studios in the past. However, it comes separately packaged and it costs around £850 to £900. So the fact that Cubase have this all in their, included in their software, I think is fantastic. And it's, it's one of those devils that you know, I know how to use this and feel comfortable using this. And with the recent upgrade, I've been very impressed with its capabilities. I wonder if I see you again. Uh, at the end there, you can hear how it, we're out of tune at the end there. What we can do, we can push that into place. That... You again. Now, you can see it dropping off here. What yeah. I'm going to do here, this is one situation where I've got the line here. If you, if you just straighten that, let's have test that. Straighten it out as much as we can. You're going to hear the artifact there. Again. Yeah, I can hear that. Damn, it jumps too much and I don't want that. So I'm going to take it back and I'm actually going to just cut here. You can see that drop down. I'm going to now push that into tune that one. And this saves hours of work. I, you know, I'm so used to using this so I can work at speed. But now look at what we can do here. We can take that end bit and we can straighten that. And then you're going to have. I wonder if I see you again. It's straighter, it's in tune, it's usable. And I can actually pull that out so that... You again. There you go, it just fades nicely. Some tuning work could be done on here. We can just sort of push that in. You can see where they're pulling and pushing. And you want to keep those smooth lines. Now, what you can do as well, you can actually just... As you can hear it, I'm just going to... Put those two together, straighten those. You know, I'm just using this as an, using this as an example, and that is Vary Audio. That's uh, that's one of the other plugins that I use on a daily basis. So here we have another one of Fab Filters um, plugins, and it's their compressor. It's the Pro C. Now I've got the Pro C two here, and I I had to upgrade it from the original one because the first was so good I used it on nearly everything. And in fact, I know it's another Fab Filter plugin, but do you know what? All of these plugins seem to be designed to be simple to use and easy to get results from while sounding absolutely gorgeous. So whether you need a subtle mastering compression or an upfront lead vocal, that magic drum glue that you're going to put together with a deep EDM pumping sound, this does it all. So this compressor offers eight different program dependent compressor styles. As you can see here, we've it's got lovely sounds and characters and they really do make a difference. Apart from this, the controls give you a look ahead. So up to four times oversampling, intelligent auto gain and auto release, as I said, you know, auto gain is something that I'd like to have more control over. Um, but even so, it's good to have it there. It's got a variable knee, hold, range, external side chain triggering, which is great for your drum tracks. It's also got uh, mid side processing, which is something that I've started to use a lot more, um, particularly because of the sort of room sounds that I'm working with. If I'm doing a lot of live recording of choirs or with ensembles, quartets, being able to use mid-side processing in the compressor is very useful and I've been combining that with the FabFilter Pro-Q3 um, to be able to have that um, mid-side processing working better for me. So what are the main differences here? Well, do you know what? Uh, the, <laughs> what I really like about this is that if most compressors have a limited option of knee settings. So um, let me explain a little bit about what the knee does. A knee is really intuitive to use and 
you know, you don't really need to have an awful lot of theory behind you um, and it's not taxing anyway. So basically what happens at a soft and ease setting, the compressor will start to kick in before the signal actually reaches the threshold. So this gives you a smoother sound. And so the knee fader can be used to either harden or soften the compression. And this works well in conjunction with a fast attack and it gives it an almost saturation-like effect. Now have a look at this sidechain section down here. I love the fact that you can hide it away and it can pop out and reveal a whole new section. And that's a beautiful touch. Um, the sidechain section was previously previously um, just an LP or HP filter section but this has been radically changed and now shows beautiful slopes from 0 to 96 dB um, per octave for the low and high pass bands plus a mid band that can be set to a bell, a low shelf, a high shelf, notch, band pass or tilt shelf so it's very similar with the adjustable Q to our Q3 that we spoke about earlier. Okay, so here's my next choice. I was going to be choosing FabFilter's Pro R Reverb because, again, it's one of those reverbs that I use on a daily basis. It's a lovely reverb for the very same reasons that I've used FabFilter products before. It looks great. It's really easy to use. However, I decided to use Breeze 2.5 by 2C Audio. It's one of the industry leading algorithmic reverbs that is so efficient and it's easy to use. Most importantly, the sounds are absolutely sublime. In the most recent version, it has grown to become one of the most powerful spatial tools on the market for its price. Breeze uses a complete novel distance link DSP mode. Now, that allows you to get the entire algorithm retuning itself based on instrument position. So effectively producing a different set of impulse responses for an infinite number of positions within the virtual room. Now get that, and this is why I chose it, because I'm combining it with their precedence. 1.5. What is precedence? Well, this is, it sounds really flash. Precedence is a psychoacoustic stereo positioning tool. It creates an organically modulating stereo image that produces an instantaneous sense of width, depth and presence, similar to a stereo microphone technique if you're using it in acoustic spaces. It then positions this image within a virtual stage in front of you, giving mix engineers an, an ultra precise control over left to right and front to back placement. The end result is an incredible sense of hyper-realistic 3D spatial effects and specific localization of each instrument within that space. Now, I talk to my students a lot about thinking and imagining the sound in front of them, how they would place it within a box. So they have to think front, back, side, left, up, down, and using the different effects like reverbs, delays, EQ, filters to be able to position that, those within that 3D space. Here, Precedence and Breeze do it for you in one very simple move. And I really like the use of this. I use this when I'm doing my bigger productions absolutely every single day. I did an album of cinematic soundscapes a short while ago. And one of the feedbacks that I had on that was that people felt everything had its place. You could hear everything clearly. And that was in the production. And a big part of that was this, Precedence and Breeze combined together. Here we have a film I'm working on at the moment, a short film by the brilliant Max Blustin. And it's quite a dark, dark idea. And there's a scene in it where we have a young family, uh, the protagonists are sitting in this living room and there is a light being flickered, which is the television screen. So you're, they're all watching television. There's quite an atmosphere in the room. And what we needed to do for copyright reasons and also mainly for the storyline, we wanted to create a, a scene that the television was creating a relevant dialogue for uh, our storyline. So what we did, we sent off the uh, script that we wrote to an actor. They then sent it on to me. And I now need to make it sound like it's a television um, television scene. So let me show you. This is, have a listen to what the actor is actually doing. This is 
I'm moving between a couple of screens here, so. Game. Which actually now sees him completely wiped out. Not going to play a game until the end of the season. Uh, what is interesting, though, is that they've also increased the fine. Okay, so that sounds as it would. It was sent through to me very clean, nicely recorded. And now what I'm going to do is bring in my Breeze 2 and um, Precedence. And what I want to do is I've created an atmosphere in the room. So I've got a dining room sort of sound with uh, reverb. I've taken off uh, some of the high end and the low end. So I've filtered out certain frequencies within there. And what Precedence is doing as well is going to give us this location so I can actually pinpoint in the image of the television in the room is to the right hand side you'll have to take my word for it for that because I can't show you for copyright reasons the screen um, however what this does as well I'm not going to do it because it will ruin my figures here so um, if I click on that I can audition various different locations in the room and distances and angles and it's a very good way of actually finding a solution even if you can tweak it after it's found a solution and this is what we've come up with and hopefully it sounds now like it should be in the room really it's not often that a player is hit that hard actually in their own pocket it is also it's eight o'clock how seriously they're taking this given everything that he has done Okay, so hopefully that's been helpful to you and given you a bit of an insight into why I use these plugins and why I upgraded to these third party plugins and how they impact my workflow on a daily basis. So if you've enjoyed that, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't, I apologize for that. And um, hopefully I'll do better next time. And also, if you've enjoyed it, subscribe. Click on that button. And if you want to be updated as to my latest um, videos, then please click on the bell as well. And I look forward to seeing you next time. All the best. Bye. <laughs>